hello everyone welcome to another video and in today's video i want to talk about uh, storage basics in aws okay so uh, i'll i'll be talking about the different types of storage uh, types available with linux operating system and specifically i want to talk about aws ebs or elastic block store volumes all right so let's start with uh, the first slide in which I want to talk about the different types of storage available with Linux operating system. So the first one is file storage. So let's just try to read through the slide and then I'm going to give you a demo of an example which will explain the concept in a better way. All right. So file storage is where you store your data as files. Files are organized in folders and the folders are organized under a hierarchy of directories and subdirectories. To locate a file, all you or your computer system need is the path from directory to subdirectory to folder to file. And there's one use case which is documentation collaboration. And we have one service in AWS called EFS or Elastic File System. So let's just try to understand this file storage with a demo. So let's take this use case of documentation collaboration and I'm going to draw a diagram now. So let me go here. So suppose within the company, there are four employees or we can say four people. Okay. Four people with four laptops that they have. Okay. So just I'm, I'm consider these like uh, four different people working on a single project. Okay. Now, suppose in this project, the files that they are trying to create, these files have to be kept on a shared location where they all need to see each other's files. Okay. So in this case, what we can do, we can set up a file storage server on a network. Suppose this is the file storage server on a network. So this is your file storage. Okay. So this is your file storage. And in this file storage, these four people have access to keep their files. Okay. So generally what happens in a, in a real time, in a real time setup, you will have this file storage server. Okay. Which is mounted on the laptops of these people. Okay. So they all have access to the same location on their laptops and they can store their files to this location. Okay. And within this file storage server, generally they will create the name. Uh, they will create one folder with their name generally, like for example, employee one, employee two, and so on. And within this folder, they can create their subfolders, right? And within these folders, they can create their files they can get their files. So this is the way we uh, use this file storage server, which can be used by multiple people to do some uh, collaborative work. Okay. In this case, it is documentation collaboration. So this is the concept of file storage and the same concept is used by EFS or elastic file system, where a single file server can be used by multiple uh, EC2 instances. Okay to uh, to put their data to all right so this is about file storage now let's try to learn about the next type of storage which is block storage so block level storage the data is stored as small chunks the small chunks uh, are called blocks okay so let me just show you an example in the diagram itself so suppose so here, if you see this file storage server, that the data is stored as simple files. Okay. But in case of block level storage, what usually happens, a single file, for example, this is one file here. A single file is divided into small chunks of data. These small chunks are called blocks. So this is block number one, block number two, block number three, and so on. Okay. So why we are trying to divide this uh, whole file into small chunks of data called blocks because 
by doing this by doing this you are able to get efficient read write operations from your storage device which ultimately gives you ultra low latency which is required for high performance workloads the meaning of these high performance workloads means i am talking about some production grade applications that are serving thousands of customers at the same time okay so to be able to uh, achieve a good performance for enterprise level applications you need a storage device that can give you efficient read and write i mean the the performance of your read write operations should be really fast should be efficient okay it should have ultra low latency <clears throat> the meaning of read and write is let me go back to the diagram suppose this is one block okay and if you are trying to read information from this block or you are trying to write to this block so this is called read write operations okay this is also called io okay which i am going to talk about io stands for input output so i am going to talk about it in much more detail conceptually in the later slides okay but just understand that block level storage is like you uh, you divide one a big chunk of data into small parts those parts are called blocks and each block is like one unit one minimum unit of data that you can read or you can write to okay and this gives ultra low latency and it also gives you efficient read write operations which is required for enterprise level applications the use case as i mentioned enterprise applications and databases in aws we have one uh, block level storage called ebs or elastic block store okay i hope the concept is clear to you if you have any doubts about these concepts you can always reach out to me in the comment section okay and i am going to answer all your queries all right next i want to talk about object level storage object level storage is unstructured data like mp3 files documents images movies games etc the meaning of this is so once again i am going to draw a diagram to explain the concept <clears throat> so suppose so let's talk about aws in aws there's a famous service or you can say one of the most important storage services apart from ebs that is called s3 s3 stands for simple storage service so this is the service that aws uh, gives their customer to use object level storage okay so when you use this s3 bucket what you do you create an s3 bucket okay so we can actually draw a bucket here so you can create an s3 bucket and in in this s3 bucket you can keep any type of data and there's no structure to the data okay it's like a bucket where you are you know just throwing random things you can throw mp3 files you can throw images png files or jpeg or svg or any other image files you can also keep your movies you can also keep your game setups okay or you, you can also keep your documents excel files pptes pdfs anything it can be anything you just need to drop it in this bucket and the data will be stored there so this is the concept of object level storage okay so we cannot install an operating system on in this type of storage okay just remember this because sometimes it is asked in the interviews can we install an operating system in s3 bucket or uh, in in an object level storage we cannot okay it is just an unstructured data where you can put random types of data and uh, just to keep it the use cases we generally use these type of storages because these are really cheap to use okay so you can use it to backup and archive okay so that's it uh, so uh, that is the use case of s3 service okay and also i'm going to uh, have a separate video on s3 where i'm going to cover a lot of concepts a lot of interview questions okay and uh, i mean it's going to be a great video where you can understand each and everything about s3 okay so i'm going to cover that in a separate video all right but here i since we are talking about storage i just wanted to touch upon these these different concepts so these are the three types of storage types available with linux operating system so file storage block storage and uh, object level storage remember these three terms okay next 
now i want to talk about the different storage options available with your aws ec2 instance okay so first one is ebs that stands for that stands for elastic block store it is a persistent block level storage the meaning of this persistent is is it is a, a permanent type of storage okay and uh, i mean whatever data you keep in these ebs volumes is uh, permanently stored there okay so that is why it is called persistent block level storage then you have another type of storage called instant store volume which is a temporary block level storage once again very important question sometimes people will ask you what is the name of a temporary block level storage in aws the answer is instant store volume okay then there is efs efs that i just spoke about which stands for elastic file system uh, so it is a managed aws service which gives you access to file server okay like a file server storage okay so once again i'll try to have a separate video on efs where i show you uh, the different concepts and uh, different uh, uh, i mean a type of a practical where i can show you how to use efs but we'll see i mean if, if time allows i'm going to create one video all right next is fsx so this is also a file storage type uh, in aws which is actually used to secure a backup archive or replicate your on premises file storage uh, data to aws then s3 which i spoke about simple storage uh, service which is an object level storage so there is one diagram on aws's documentation page which i want to show you and i'm going to cover the concepts of these four in a better way there all right which is given on aws's official documentation page okay and in this diagram we can see the different types of uh, storage available with ec2 instances okay and uh, so let's just start so first we should understand uh, what is an ec2 instance okay so i i've covered in i mean i have made two videos one on virtual machines and virtualization okay the link of that video will be in the description of this video so do check that out to to understand what are virtual machines and what is virtualization in general okay and uh, and i believe in my last video on ec2 instances i have spoken about the the type of uh, this hypervisor that aws uses it is called zen hypervisor okay so <clears throat> how an ec2 instance is created you have a physical server if you see this box which is called as amazon ec2 host so this is actually the physical server the physical server is called host okay so on this physical server using the hypervisor okay which is the customized version of um, virtualization software that aws uses AWS creates their instances, okay, or virtual machines. So, so if, if, as you can see here in this example, we have two instances created on this one physical server, instance A and instance B, okay. Then just below that, you will see Amazon EC2 instance storage, instance store zero, one, and two. The meaning of this is, instance store volumes are directly attached to the physical host and not to the instance. Remember this. This is a really important concept sometimes asked in the interviews as well okay so just remember instance store volumes are directly attached to the physical host or the physical server okay which means if you stop and start your ec2 instance you're going to lose your instance store data why is that so because when you stop and start an ec2 instance the underlying physical host changes and since this instance store volume is attached to the host and not to the server, if you stop and start your EC2 instance, the host is going to change. The new host will have new instance store volume and the old instance store volume will go away. Okay. So that is why it is called a temporary block level storage because it cannot be persisted. Okay. Because there will be scenarios wherein you have to stop and start your instance to troubleshoot an issue. So once you stop and start, this instance store volume will go away. So it is only used to store some temporary level data, okay, which is, uh, I mean, which can be deleted anytime. So instance store just gives you the 
the temporary block level storage it is attached physically to the host the underlying host or the physical server all right so this is the concept of instance store and when you when you stop and start your instance the instance store uh, data is lost okay but you can still reboot the server okay reboot is not going to do anything okay so a reboot is not going to change your underlying host only when you stop and start the underlying host changes okay so this is about instance store volume now let's talk about ebs volumes so as you can see in the diagram once again unlike instance store volumes the ebs volumes or elastic block store volumes are attached to the uh, ec2 instance on a network so once again ebs volumes can uh, you know I mean, uh, can be used independently of our ec2 instances which means if you have an ec2 instance and it has one ebs volume attached to it okay if you uh, terminate the instance you can still keep your ebs volumes intact okay this is because once again this ebs volume is attached uh, separately to this ec2 instance via a network okay and this this network is called storage area network so this is actually uh, the term used in storage okay i mean we don't have to learn too much about it but just understand that ebs volumes are attached to ec2 instances on a network and that that network is called storage area network or sam okay <clears throat> so uh, 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 you can terminate an ec2 instance and you can still keep your ebs volume intact okay and then this ebs volume can be attached to other ec2 instances also and it will have the same data as your old ec2 instance because the data is inside the ebs volume and not on the instance all right so this is the concept of ebs okay then there's there's one more type of storage the file storage uh, so aws has its own managed file storage service called efs or elastic file system so wherein you create your your file system uh, storage and then you can attach this to um, multiple ec2 instances okay so so this is the uh, uh, example of a documentation collaboration which i just spoke about so you can use you can use efs service to do the same okay so this is the concept of efs which uses the uh, file server storage okay and uh, this instance store also uses the block level storage but it is temporary in nature then ebs also uses block level storage but it is permanent in nature or it is persistent in nature and it can stay uh, outside of the life of your ec2 instance to which is it is attached okay i'm going to show the practicals of these okay this ebs volume specially then how are ec2 instances connected to s3 volumes sorry s uh, uh, not s3 volume but uh, s3 buckets or s3 object level storage so <clears throat> when you create a backup of your ebs volume okay the backup that you create is called a snapshot okay so snapshots which which are the backups of your ebs volumes are stored in s3 buckets and these s3 buckets are not managed by us these are managed by aws remember this so if you want to check the snapshot that you've created in aws you're going to see that on ec2 dashboard and not inside an s3 bucket because these s3 buckets are only managed by aws and we cannot see them okay so all the snapshots are available on ec2 dashboard itself but uh, i mean behind the scenes these are stored under s3 buckets okay then if you remember from my aws i am deep dive uh, deep dive uh, the video where i spoke about how you can actually uh, upload the data from an ec2 instance to an s3 bucket for that you have to attach an iam role to ec2 instance that iam role should have the uh, the permission policy to upload files to the s3 bucket where you want to upload the data and then you can use aws cli commands to store the data from an ec2 instance to an s3 bucket okay so you can check that video out to to to, to see the practical demo of this thing okay so this is not related to this this uh, this video but i just wanted to uh, talk about it since we are talking about s3 buckets and ec2 instance connection 
So I hope the concept is clear about EFS volumes, EC2 host, instance store, EBS volumes, and S3 buckets. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So now we will talk about in much more detail about EBS or elastic block store volumes because this is one of the most important concepts in terms of storage. Apart from S3, this is another, another important concept that is frequently asked in the interview questions. Okay, so remember this, that EBS volumes are flexible or scalable, which means you can increase the size of an EBS volume on the fly, which means you don't have to stop your EC2 instance, you don't have to stop your application, Okay, so there will be no impact to the users when you're trying to increase the size of an existing EBS volume. It can be done on the fly. But remember, you cannot reduce the size of an EBS volume. Sometimes this is asked in the interviews that can you reduce the size of an EBS volume? No, we cannot. We can only increase its size. Okay, and EBS volumes are high performance, as I mentioned, high performance block storage, and these are also called virtual hard disks in the cloud. Then you also get the option of encryption with your EBS volumes. So let's talk about encryption on a very high level. Okay, let me just show you on a diagram. Let's just uh, delete this. So what do you mean by encryption? Suppose you are sending one data over a network from one location to the other and suppose this is your data that you want to send a b one two three okay now to secure this data what you can do is you can encrypt this data the meaning of encryption is you're going to convert your original data to something called as ciphertext okay you will convert this data to something called as ciphertext this means your, your original data will be converted to some other characters. It can be like hash, exclamation, sorry, at the rate, exclamation, dollar, percentage. It can be anything. It depends on your, on your encryption algorithm that you are using. So there are various algorithms that you can use to encrypt your data. So, but I just want to I mean, cover this encryption concept on a very high level. So encryption means your original data will be converted to something called as ciphertext using an encryption algorithm plus encryption key. Okay, so from here, if you want to send this data in an encrypted format over a network, so the person who will receive the data should have the 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 uh, the same key to decrypt your data to the original form. So whatever encryption key you have used here. That, that encryption key should be there with the person who wants to decrypt it. I mean, this is one of the concepts. There are other concepts as well, but I'm just talking about the very basic concept of encryption. So you encrypt your data into ciphertext using an encryption algorithm and encryption key. And then when the data is sent to the destination over a network, then the person who has received the data is able to decrypt your data to the original form. Okay, from this to this original form using the encryption key. So this is called encryption and this is one of the ways to secure your data. So with EBS volumes, you get the option of encryption also. So you can encrypt your data as well, okay? Then you can create EBS snapshots to backup data and applications. As I mentioned, you can you have the option to create your EBS snapshots that are stored in an S3 bucket managed by AWS and not by us. But you still get to see those uh, snapshots on EC2 dashboard. Then EBS gives you the option of choosing the different volume types to balance your storage performance and cost. Remember this, the higher the performance of your storage, the more your AWS bill will be. Okay, so it is very important uh, depending on the application that you want to deploy on your EC2 instance, I mean, what kind of storage performance is required. Okay, if, if you don't need too much storage performance, you, I mean, you don't have to go for uh, the expensive storage type with EBS. Okay, I mean you can use the the most common one or the general purpose storage type. I'm going to talk about these storage uh, types in the in, in the latest slides, but just understand that you should have the right 
a combination of storage and performance so that you are uh, you know i mean uh, i mean you have some budget i mean which you are able to manage and you are able to give the right performance for your application okay so we do have different options available with ebs all right next so uh, basics of ebs volumes in aws okay now this ebs volume that we are able to use with our ec2 instances is actually a, a byproduct of certain things that happen behind the scenes okay so uh, let me explain that by an example suppose you are working for a company and that company has taken uh, i mean uh, that company is uh, not using cloud infrastructure as of now they are using some red hat servers so they have taken subscription from red hat and they have a contract with red hat company and uh, they are using their servers okay now if you're uh, uh, if you're not using this red hat server in aws cloud and you've taken directly from red hat in that case what usually happens uh, let me just show you in an example so let me just delete this so what will happen in that case okay so this red hat server that you have suppose this is your server this is your server okay just take an example this is your red hat server which is not on cloud okay it is on premises on premises uh, uh, server which is not in cloud so now if you have i mean if you're trying to create this red hat server and if you're attaching some virtual hard disk to this for example this is your hard disk let's just take an example this is your hard disk that you're attaching to the server okay in this case what usually happens the raw hard disk the raw virtual hard disk that you attach to the server is of no use i mean it it has to be initialized or it has to be converted to usable form okay the meaning of this is when you uh, when you attach a raw virtual hard disk to a server okay that is not on cloud especially i'm talking about aws if it i mean if, uh, if you if you're not using uh, ebs volumes then you have to i mean perform some additional steps to make this virtual hard disk usable with your server okay so uh, what you do the physical or the virtual disk that you attach to the server has to be initialized as a physical volume so this is the concept of linux okay this is a linux concept but only when you are using on premises infrastructure and not on aws in aws you get this ebs volume which is the byproduct of these steps so i'm just trying to explain you the steps that are working behind the scenes to create your ebs volume okay so this ebs volume uh, i mean so it, it all starts with a physical or virtual disk in our case it is a virtual disk this virtual disk is initialized as a physical volume using some linux commands called a pv create commands okay i don't want to go into the details of it just just understand that uh, there are some commands that you run after you attach this instance to the server to uh, I mean, create this physical volume then uh, those physical volumes are added to a volume group okay and from these volume groups you create something called as logical volumes or i think you must have heard the word of lvms or uh, logical volume management so this is the concept of lvm on a very high level okay and then uh, these volumes are actually attached to your main server okay so when you are using ebs you are using the byproduct of this process so aws is doing a lot for you already okay so it is like plug and play okay plug and play storage where you can just attach it to your instance and use it straight away without you having to do anything of this but behind the scenes this is the process that is happening okay to create your ebs volume so this is all being taken care by aws so we are using the byproduct of this process which is an ebs volume which we can simply attach to our ec2 instance and we can start using it okay so this is is all equal to ebs volume and uh, this old server is now an ec2 instance in cloud i hope the concept is clear to you you, you just need to understand this on a very high level okay if you are working in aws cloud
all right so this is about the basics of ebs volume now let's talk about another important concept another important uh, storage concept especially which is asked in the interviews okay iops and throughput so, so let's just understand what is an io io which stands for input output it means reading from or writing to a disk okay a single block read or write can be called one io okay i think i already explained this when i was talking about the block level storage concept so within uh, within a storage device that one single block that you are able to read or you are able to write to is called one io or one input output okay so a single block read or write can be called one io then applications reads and write data to blocks okay so remember this applications will always read and write data to blocks okay i'm going to show you a small demo also to uh, explain this better but i just want to cover the theoretical aspects of it first so what is a uh, then uh, what is throughput when data is read or written in sequence then storage performance will be calculated as throughput okay and a throughput is calculated in uh, megabytes per second so once again i'm going to show it to you in in a demo but i just want to cover the the, the theoretical aspects of it so just understand that whenever the data is being written in a sequence in a storage volume okay then the storage performance is calculated in mb per second which is called throughput okay now if the the same data is read or written without any sequence okay then the storage performance will be calculated as iops iops stand for input output operations per second and the data uh, the, the performance will be calculated as count the number the number of iops that you are able to get from your storage volume is the uh, the measure of your storage performance storage volume performance okay so it's called input output operations per second so the difference between throughput and iops is in throughput the data is always read or written in sequence and it is calculated as mb per second in case of iops the data is is, is not read or written in sequence and the data uh, the performance is calculated as the number the count number of iops okay then a bigger io size will give you a better throughput a smaller io size will give you better iops performance okay now let's see these things in a demo how it actually works okay uh, what is the concept of iops and throughput suppose uh, 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 this is your uh, ebs volume okay this is your ebs volume for example this ebs volume is of 5 mbs so this is just an example of course an ebs volume will not be uh, this small but just just to make you understand the concept of iops and throughput just assume this is a 5 mb ebs volume this ebs volume is divided into small blocks of data okay and each block size is 1 mb okay each block size is 1 mb okay so so we have uh, five blocks here in this ebs volume now if you're trying to read from one block of data or you're trying to write to this one block of data it's called io input output okay <clears throat> input output now in case of throughput if you remember the meaning of throughput is when the data is read written in sequence so for example for example if you are able to read 3 mbs of data per second in sequence means first it it will be uh, uh, this block then this block then this block okay so this is the sequence right so if you are able to read these three uh, 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 you know uh, these three blocks in one second then your throughput performance will be 3 mb per second okay if you go back to this slide so throughput is when the data is read or written in sequence so storage performance will be in mb per second so in this example in this example i am trying to read three blocks or 3 mbs of data in one second so the throughput is 3 mb per second i hope this is clear okay this is the simplest example that i could have taken okay so the data has to be read in sequence in throughput remember this okay now what is iops 
when the data is read without any sequence. For example, you read this once, then you read this, then you read this. So, I mean, once again, if you are able to read uh, three, you know, uh, three blocks like this one, sorry, then this one, then this one. So, uh, not in sequence. In that case, in that case, the performance will be will be calculated in IOPS. So, if you are able to read three IOPS, okay, in one go, then the performance will be three IOPS. The storage performance will be calculated as three IOPS. So, this is the difference between IOPS and throughput. So, when the data is in, is is being read in sequence, it will be uh, uh, calculated as throughput, which is in MB per second. If you are if you are trying to read data without any sequence, then it will be calculated as IOPS and it is the count. Okay, so it will be always a, a, a number. Okay, three blocks, then five blocks or seven blocks. It can be anything depending on your storage performance. Okay, and uh, this EBS volume is attached to your EC2 instance. I hope this concept of IOPS and throughput is clear to you. This is uh, so once again, this is a very important question. It is asked in the interviews. Okay, uh, what are IOPS and what is throughput and what is the difference between the two? All right. Let's move on to next. So now I want to talk about the different volume types in EBS. If you remember, I talked, I spoke about there are uh, different volume types available that you can use depending on your application, how the performance of storage you want for your application, you can choose the right volume type. Okay. So, so, so uh, I mean, don't get confused with instance type. Okay. EC2 instance type is a, uh, I mean, is a, a concept where you get your CPUs and RAM. Okay, the this volume type. Okay, e, e, this uh, uh, EBS volume type is where you get your storage performance. Okay, so so there are two different concepts. Okay, EC2 instance types and EBS volume types. All right. So let's talk about the the different volume types available with EBS. The first one is general purpose SSD, which stands for solid state drive, general purpose SSD. So there are two types of SSDs available, okay, GP2 and GP3. So GP stands for general purpose and this two stands for generation. GP2 means second generation, GP3 means third generation, the latest one. It is the lowest cost with performance that works for most VDM workloads. The size of the volume can be from 1 GB bytes to 16 uh, terabytes. Okay. So this type of storage is used when you are a starter, when you are new to AWS and, and you are not sure what type of uh, volume type should be used. You can start with GP3 general purpose SSD volume. Remember this. Okay. Use a GP3 and not GP2. Okay. Why? I'll, I'm going to talk about this. Okay. In a while. Just remember that a general purpose SSDs or solid state drives, it's going to give you the balance between your price and performance and it is good for transactional or medium sized workloads, virtual desktops, medium sized single instances and single instance databases or some uh, dev test apps, it is perfect. So GP3 is of the latest generation and lowest cost SSD volumes. As I just mentioned, GP3 is the, is the latest generation and it is going to cost you 20% less than GP2. So this was the reason I wanted you to use GP3 by default. When you're, when you're not sure which type of volume type you have to choose for your application, start with GP3. It's going to cost you uh, 20% less than GP2 and it also gives you better performance. Okay. And once again, I'm going to show you a, 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 a practical demo after I I, I finished the uh, the concepts. Okay, so a GP3 is better in terms of IOPS and throughput, and this is the official documentation that you can refer. All right. Then next is a provisioned IOPS. This is the second type of storage. Okay, provisioned IOPS. It has the highest performance and durability for a, a longer workloads. But of course, it's even. Uh, you're going to pay more because you, you're going to get the highest storage performance for your application. The size of the volume can be from uh, 4 GB bytes to 64 terabytes. 
and it is it is best for mission critical workloads requiring sub millisecond latency if you see if you have an application that needs the highest uh, storage performance you can go for provisioned iops volume type with ebs okay once again i have uh, 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 just given the documentation url that you can read through okay i mean i don't want to i mean go into too many details because it is just the the theoretical part you should know and sometimes it is asked in the interviews as well the type of volume uh, i mean the volume types available with ebs okay next is throughput optimized hard disk drives so this is for uh, frequently accessed throughput intensive workloads it is best for a big data data warehouses and log processing okay then there's one more which is cold hard disk drive this is the lowest cost hard disk drive for a less frequently accessed workload so just remember if you have some application which is uh, no uh, not accessed frequently and which needs very low storage performance and you just want you know uh, the lowest uh, this volume type of uh, uh, you know uh, i mean for your applications in that case you can go for cold hdd it's going to give you the lowest cost but also the performance will be lowest it is best for file servers and infrequently accessed data all right and this is the official uh, documentation you can read through this i hope uh, the concept is clear the volume types and uh, i just go through this this uh, this documentation and if you have any doubts uh, just reach out to me okay so this is about volume types now uh, let's talk about ec2 ebs snapshots so eb uh, the ec2 ebs snapshots are point in time backups used to restore data in the past okay so when you take a snapshot of your ebs volume the the point at which you take the snapshot it's going to have the same data means when you're trying to restore the data it's going to have the same data depending on the time at which you took the snapshot so uh, that is why these are called uh, uh, point in time backups used to restore data in the past okay these are incremental backups apart from the very first snapshot which is always a full snapshot what is the meaning of this suppose you have a new ebs volume attached to an ec2 instance and uh, you're trying to take uh, uh, the backup of it so you you just created one snapshot so the first snapshot that you created of your ebs volume it is going to be the full snapshot okay that means the backup will be of the complete volume size then the second snapshot that you take uh, it will only have that the changes from your, your uh, last backup okay so let's just understand it with a diagram because again once again this is a very important concept suppose this is your ebs volume okay so uh, when you take the the first snapshot the first snapshot will be of the same size of your ebs volume same size the first snapshot now after you took the uh, this first snapshot you uh, change some data in your ebs one suppose this volume i mean uh, this portion of the volume changed so now when you take the second snapshot that snapshot will only have will only have this changed data because the other data is already there in the first snapshot so this is called incremental backups incremental backup means only the data that has changed from the last snapshot will be backed up in the uh, uh, next snapshot okay uh, i mean why we do it because you are charged for the storage of your snapshot okay so if you take snapshot i mean if you are taking the snapshot of the whole volume each time then your i mean bill is going to increase a lot but if you're just taking the backup of the changes that you've done to your volume then the bill will be less because it depends on the storage okay so for example this was a 10 gb in size so the first snapshot will be of a, a 10 gb and now in this 10 gb you you change just a 2 gb for example so the next uh, this snapshot will be only of 2 gb so I mean, you will only be charged for this 2 GB and not for the entire 10 GB. 
in your incremental snapshot. So this is called incremental snapshot strategy. So this is what AWS does too. Okay. So I mean, uh, you can save a, a lot of cost by using this incremental snapshot strategy of AWS. Then, as I mentioned, these snapshots are stored in AWS S3 buckets that we cannot access. It is completely managed by AWS behind the scenes. EBS snapshots also supports encryption. Okay. So these are about the concepts of EBS snapshots. And uh, so uh, 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 let's see a, a practical demo of all the things that we've seen. Okay. So I'm going to go into AWS now, AWS Management Console, and I'm going to show you everything in practical. So this is my AWS Management Console. And uh, to go to EBS, EBS is part of EC2 service. So you have to, you have to navigate to EC2. So you can click on EC2 from recently visited services or you can search in the search box also. Okay. So let's click on EC2. And on the left hand side, you can see the section of Elastic Block Store, which stands for EBS. Okay. So uh, let's just try to create a volume. So we'll go to volumes. And I can click on create volume. And let's see what all options are available. If you see the first volume, uh, the first option is volume type. So if, if you just click on a drop down, you will see all the volume types available. Okay. So a GP2 is there, GP3 is there. Okay. Provision IOPS. In provision IOPS, you have two types of volume, IO1 and IO2. Once again, this IO2 is of the latest generation and IO1 is of the uh, past generation. Okay. So the general purpose, we have two types of storage. In provision IOPS, we have two types of storage. Then we have this cold HDD, which is the lowest cost option available with volume types. Then we have throughput optimized HDD. And there's one more, which is like an, uh, the legacy one, which is called magnetic standard, which we don't use anymore. So just uh, uh, disregard uh, uh, this volume type and uh, just consider the other volume types that are actually used in real. Okay, so if you see here, um, by default, the option is GP3. So GP3 is the one that you should start with if you are, uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure of what type of uh, storage performance is required for your application. So you can always start with GP3. Okay, so if we choose GP3 here, if you see here, the size, in terms of size, the minimum size is 1 GB and maximum it can be 16384 GIB. Okay. So uh, uh, this is the size range of a GP3 volume. Okay, so uh, uh, let's just make it as one GB because we're just doing a demo. So I'm taking, I'm trying to create one, one GB of a GP3 volume. Then IOPS, if you see, with GP3 you get 3,000 IOPS by default. So even for one GB of storage, you are getting 3,000 IOPS. So, so that is a very good deal. Okay. So this is a very good uh, performance that you get with GP3, okay? And this is the the minimum IOPS that you get and uh, it can go up to 16,000 IOPS, okay? And as I mentioned, IOPS value will always be a value, an integer, always. If I change it to, to, to GP2, for example, okay? If I change to GP2, you will see a few things change. If I'm using GP2 volume type, Okay, I can keep the size as 1 GB, but if you see here, I don't get the option to choose the IOPS. Okay, and you get a baseline of 3 IOPS per GB only. Okay, if you, if you see, you get this uh, 3 IOPS uh, 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 this per GB. Okay, so, but in case of GP3, you get at least 3000 IOPS with one GB. So this is the difference. So GP3 is actually more, uh, I mean, efficient and it is a, a less expensive as well. So always go for GP3. Okay. Then you get the option to choose a throughput also with GP3. But if I, if I change it to GP2, you, 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 you don't get any uh, throughput, uh, option here. Okay. So, so this is the big difference between GP2 and GP3. Sometimes, in some uh, advanced AWS interviews, this question may be asked. Okay, maybe, but just as 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 for your knowledge, I just wanted to um, cover this part. 
so uh, uh, let's just try to create one gp3 volume here one gb all right one more thing whenever you're trying to create a volume a volume will always be created in an availability zone remember this availability zone always and also if this volume has to be attached to an ec2 instance okay an ec2 instance uh, is always created i mean it's also is also created in one availability zone okay so the az's of your uh, ebs volume and ec2 instance should match if you want to attach this ec2 instance to an to an uh, i mean if you want to attach this ebs volume to an ec2 instance then this availability zone or az should match as well okay if you see here i get the option of all the availability zones since i'm using this non virginia region we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, different availability zones here okay so i here i'm i'm just using us east 1a then uh, just leave everything as default i mean you have the option to end give the volume but uh, let's just keep it as default and just click on create volume so this is the the simplest way to create a gp3 volume in aws okay so this is your volume id if you see here the status of the volume is available it means the volume is not attached to any ec2 instance okay so if it is attached to an ec2 instance the volume state is going to change from available to in use okay so uh, let's just try to attach it to an instance now so so how to do it you can go to actions you can go to attach volume and then you have to choose the instance okay uh, but just before that i just want to show you what all instances are already running in my uh, aws account so i can click on instances and i can see what all instances are already there in my aws account so you see here i have two ec2 instances one is in availability zone us east 1a and the other one is in us east 1d okay just remember uh, 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 these two availability zones and now i'll go back to attach volume tab and if i click on instance i just get the option to choose one and not the other one so this is because of availability zone so your ebs volume and your ec2 instance should be in the same availability zone okay to be able to attach this volume to an instance okay since since only one instance is in us east 1a the instance id of this volume is 36d2 it's ending in 36d2 so i am only only going to get the option of uh, 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 attaching this volume to this instance only because the other instance is in another availability zone us is 1d so i cannot attach this volume to that instance okay so you can just choose this instance then you have to choose the device name okay the meaning of device name is uh it it's it, it, it's actually called block device mapping okay so i mean when you are using uh an uh linux instance okay so uh, this is a, a linux instance okay this is a linux instance when you're attaching in uh, a volume to a linux instance you have to see the name that you can use for your block device okay uh, uh, I mean for your EBS volume. Okay, how to uh, 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 decide on that? Just I mean go to your instances. I mean just uh, choose the instance and go to storage part and see if there's already a volume attached to it. You can see there's one volume attached to it, and the device name is slash dev slash xvda. So this is the name for root device volume. The meaning of root device volume is it holds your operating system. Okay. So it, the name of this device will always be slash dev slash xvda. So uh, you cannot use this name for your uh, uh, this next EBS volume. So if I if I go back to attach volume tab under device name, I cannot use slash dev slash xvda. So uh, that is why it is in it, it is get out and uh, and it says the device name is already in use. Then you have to use the next available option, which is slash dev slash xv uh, sdb like this and click on attach volume
So this is going to attach this EBS volume to that EC2 instance. And then you can just start to use it straight away because we don't have to create any physical volume. We don't have to create any, any logical volume. We, we, uh, we can just plug and play, okay? So now if I click on the instance and hit refresh, and now you can see one more volume attached to it, okay? Let's just refresh from here and let me choose this storage. And you can see here our a new volume with name slash dev slash sdb attached to this instance size is 1 gb and the size of the uh, i mean the state of the volume is also if i click on the volume here you can check the volume state has changed to in use so this is the way you to create a volume create a volume and attach to an ec2 instance i hope the concept is clear to you now next if you want to take a snapshot of this volume just click on actions click on create snapshot then you can give some uh, a, a description like a second volume okay it can be anything just uh, i'm just ending some i mean i'm just entering some random text and just click on create snapshot it's going to create the snapshot of your volume okay and if you click on snapshot id you can see the snapshot status it is in available status okay the snapshot has been completed okay and now if you want to create a volume from this snapshot just click on actions and click on create volume from snapshot. Then again, you get the option to choose the volume type. The size will be 1 GB because we are trying to restore the same volume. So the volume, uh, the volume size was 1 GB. So it's, it's going to be 1, 1 GB again. And uh, if you want, you can create this volume in another availability zone. For example, US East 1D. Then just click on create volume. So in this way, you just created a volume from a snapshot. Okay, so this is one more volume and it is in available status. All right, because it is not attached to any EC2 instance. So this is about your EBS volume and EBS snapshot. I hope the concept is clear to you how to create an EBS volume. Okay, and how to attach it to an EC2 instance for use and how to take the snapshot of an EBS volume. Okay. Now uh, let's talk about another important concept, which is AMI, okay? EC2 AMI, Amazon Machine Image. So AMI is like a template, okay? Template to create the server. Uh, it holds the information on what operating system you want to have on your EC2 instance and what on additional software or additional configuration you want on your EC2 instance is all taken care by an AMI. You get some pre-baked AMI from AWS's side. If you remember, let me go back to my EC2 dashboard. And if you click on launch instances, I think I showed you this. Yeah, I, I showed you this in my uh, EC2 instances deep dive video, but I just want to cover AMI concept here. So if you click on launch instance, you get the option to choose the AMI. So AMI is the template that is going to decide what operating system will be there on your Linux, on your EC2 instance, okay? So, you, you, I mean, you get some pre-baked AMI from uh, uh, AWS that you can use, but you can create your own custom AMI also because AMI is also a backup. It's the backup of your entire EC2 instance and not just volume, okay? If you see the definition in the slide, it says it includes your EBS snapshots. It also includes your AMI launch permissions, and it also includes your block device mappings to specify for the attached volumes. Now, what is the meaning of this? Okay, so uh, let me go back to the AWS management console and uh, sh uh, show it to you. So I'll go to uh, I'll go to this AMI option first. No, I'll I'll just uh, try to create one AMI for you. So suppose uh, this is my instance here, this instance demo EC2 and I just want to create an AMI for it. So AMI is like a backup of the entire instance, including your EBS snapshots, your launch permissions of the AMI and plus your block device mapping. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to come to this, these details. What is the meaning of uh, the, uh, the launch permissions and uh, this block device mapping, but uh, let's just try to create one AMI here. So choose the instance. Then click on actions, click on instance, uh, sorry, uh, just click on image and uh, templates and click on create image. It's going to create an AMI. 
then give the name demo ami2 and you can choose the same name as, as a description and then you get the option so by default when you're getting an ami your instance will be rebooted remember this very important because if you are taking an ami in production and you don't want the the server to be restarted so you have to check this option okay so i i, I mean I, I don't i don't want this instance to reboot so i can just check this option and the instance will not be rebooted while taking the ami then just click on create image so it's going to create an ami of your instance and and you get the ami id also you click on it that ami uh, you can check if ami is completed or not okay and uh, just move this a little on the left and you can see the status is still pending it's going to take like a couple of minutes okay to uh, uh, come back sorry to to complete and uh, yeah so but to, to save time in this video i have already created one ami of the same instance and let me show it to you so this is the ami that i just created before the video and it is an available status so i just want to show you some of the details with an ami so let's just click on this ami id here and you can see the owner account id the owner account id is my account id if you just match it with this account id it's going to be the same okay then scroll down and you can see the permissions now the meaning of this permissions is if i click on edit ami permission you have the option to share this ami in this account with another account for that what do you have to do you have to choose i mean you have to just click on edit ami permissions you have to click on this add create volume permission and then you have to choose the account id or the aws account id of another account and you can share this ami with another account also okay so this is one more option that is available okay and uh, let's talk about <clears throat> the block device mappings the meaning of this block device mappings is yeah this so when i I chose this AMI and when I went to storage section, I saw this device name slash dev slash xdda. So this is the block device mapping. So when you are taking the AMI of your EC2 instance, it's going to have the EBS snapshots. It's also going to have the device name or the block device mapping for your storage volume when you create an instance from this AMI. Okay, so AMIs are used to launch instances, remember, because this is the backup of your entire ec2 instance so you have the option to launch an instance from this ami okay and and when you do that you will get 8 gb of of ebs volume attached and it will be attached as slash dev slash xvda so the block device mapping is intact the permissions also intact and you do have the option to uh, 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 uh share this ami with another aws account okay i hope the concept is clear okay uh then there's there's one more thing about the ami if you install any software or if you store any data to your ebs volume and then you create the ami then that ami will have the same data so I mean, when you create another instance from that ami that instance is going to hold all the data that was there at the time of creation of the AMI. So that is why it's called the backup of your EC2 instance. So sometimes it is asked in the interview, what is the difference between an EBS snapshot and EC2 AMI? So you should know that EBS snapshot is the backup of only the storage volume, the EBS volume. It's the backup of only the EBS volume, but AMI is the backup of the entire EC2 instance. It includes the EBS snapshots, EBS volume snapshots, plus uh, the block device mapping and the AMI launch permissions. So this is the difference between EBS snapshot and EC2 AMI. All right. I hope the concept is clear to you. And uh, 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 that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit, the, hit that like button and uh, share this video with others who wants to learn AWS or DevOps. 
and uh, please subscribe to my channel to support my work all right guys i'm going to see you in the next one bye for now